Hello and welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday. This is episode 75 for October 5th, 2018. And today what we're going to talk about is an introduction to admin analytics. Now this past week, or I guess it was last week, at the Ignite conference in Orlando, we announced the public preview of the Power Platform Admin Center. So this is the convergence of some of our previous admin experiences that used to have their own property. So for example, Dynamics, Flow, Power Apps, they were all on separate portals. And what we've done is taken our first step in order to unify these different experiences. And one of the first or core features that we've included is admin analytics. So let's go ahead and jump right in and take a closer look at these experiences. Okay, so I am at the Power Platform Admin Center and do note this is in preview. All of these features we're going to talk about are in preview. Um, one of the core areas or the area that we want to focus on today is analytics. And there's really three different analytics um, areas, for lack of a better term. One would be the common data service for apps. So this is what's commonly referred to as organizational insights or org insights on from a CRM perspective. Then naturally we have Microsoft Flow and we have Power Apps. So let's take a closer look at Microsoft Flow. And the first report we're going to take a look at is runs. So this would be runs that exists um, from a daily perspective, a weekly perspective, and monthly perspective. You can go ahead and check, take a look and see how many runs um, have existed within a specific environment every day. Uh, you can see how many have failed, how many have canceled, and the total runs. Now, if you wanted to break that out by week, we have the ability to show you that as well. And we'll show you week by week what is your trend. And then certainly month by month, uh, we'll show you your trend as well. Now, something I should have mentioned earlier, but um, is important to call out, is that we are showing these analytics based upon a specific environment. So in this case, it's called uh, admin and maker functions is the name of our environment. Uh, but we have the ability to change this. We can do it by clicking on the change filter. We can go ahead and choose our specific environment that we want. And we can also go ahead and choose the duration. And yes, as you see that, uh, 28 days is the maximum amount of data retention currently. If you are interested in more data than that or longer retention period than that, certainly want to hear from you and understand your requirements. Another caveat, and um, that's worth calling out, is that for now, and this is something we're going to fix, remember it is preview, is that you do need to be a tenant admin in order to access this admin center. Now, in addition to that, you also need to ensure that you are an administrator of an environment, which may not be something that's been explicitly set. Um, you do need to explicitly set it, and you would set that from within the previous flow admin portal. And I'll just quickly show you how you can do that. So you click on the previous admin portal, and then you would go ahead and click on the environment, click on security, and then make sure that the user that you're accessing the unified admin center with is included in this list. And for this specific demo, I'm using the identity of Ben Walters. So that's something you need to do in each environment if you want to be able to actually see the analytics for that environment. This is a, a short-term issue. This is something we're going to fix so that if you are a tenant admin, um, by default, you will have access to all of the environments. And then on the flip side, you shouldn't have to be a tenant admin in order to log into this site. Um, if you're an environment admin, we should allow you to log into the site and then you should only be able to see data that you truly have access to. So for example, you have access to this specific environment, then you'd be able to see the analytics for that environment. Okay, so moving on to the next uh, report, and this is called Usage. So Usage is going to give you an indication of the types of flows that exist that are active and being used. And so there's three different types of flows that exist. We have system events, so these would be things like, oh, I've created a new record inside of a SharePoint list, and I'm going to have this automated flow that's going to go ahead and, and process those those are those data events. Next we have button clicks, so these could be things like the Flow Mobile buttons, and then we have scheduled, so things like recurrence. Every 6 a.m. go ahead and run this flow. We have a, a breakdown of these different flows in use, and as you'd expect from a Power BI experience, 
it is all contextually aware. So we can go ahead and slice and dice and sort of see the different trend line for each of these different types of flows. And then naturally on the right hand side here, we will see um, the name of the flow that shows up. So if you're interested in, you know, what is my most frequently run, you know, uh, scheduled flow, um, we would have the ability to do that and we can schedule it. Or sorry, we can see the runs for this specific category of scheduled. Much like other Power BI uh, widgets or visualizations, we have the ability to export this data. And we do plan on adding some additional fields to this specific, these different reports. Um, in particular, this one, who is the owner of this flow? I think there would be some, some useful information. Next, let's head over to the Created tab. And similar, this is going to be a similar report to usage in the sense that we will display the different types of flows that have been created as opposed to the that are in use. So we can see, you know, button clicked or scheduled click. And once again, it's all contextually aware. So we can go ahead and slice and dice these different flows and see exactly when they were created. Uh, similarly, we'll see the flow name. I think once again, it would make sense to include the flow owner. Um, if in the event that we wanted to reach out to to that specific owner. Next up, we do have errors. And this is an interesting report. We see a lot of requests from customers that want to understand when they have uh, essentially runaway flows. So flows that aren't behaving well and the maker or the owner of that flow may not be, be paying attention to it. They don't want to run a risk of having you know, their quotas being used up by flows that actually aren't working. So this would allow an administrator to come in and actually see what are the flows that have the most errors and then give you the ability to resolve that. So once again, we, we will include um, the owner of this flow so that you have the ability to reach out to them. We have some other ideas. If you've seen our error detail report from Maker, um, we're probably going to borrow some of the concepts from that experience as well and include them in admin just so that the admin can be like super productive as they try to triage these specific errors. Now the next two tabs I'm going to give you as a, as a sneak peek. Uh, these are reports that you won't see in production yet. Uh, well, this is technically production. They're just behind feature flags at this point. But uh, these are the next two reports that you're going to see in your tenant. Hopefully that'll be soon. Um, but I thought it was worth um, you know, going through and giving you a preview of these. So we're going to sh uh, show you the types of flows that have been shared and the number of shares as well. So I think this is a, an opportunity from a change management perspective to understand who um, and the types of flows are being shared the most. And once again, I think this would make sense to once again have the owner of the flow that's sharing. And if we can see that it's being shared a lot, you know, that might be an opportunity to, to better understand what that user is trying to achieve and uh, try to provide them with additional support if they're, if they're interested in that. Lastly, we'll show connectors. And this is another report that has been in high demand from customers. They want to understand what are the different types of connectors that are being used within the environment. Uh, so we have the ability to, to basically slice and dice based upon the number of runs and based upon the, the number of connections. And so what the difference is here uh, so here we can see that we've got the Office 365 connector and it's been involved in 1,579 different runs within the last 29 days. Now if we go ahead and uh, check it out by connections, we will see that this flow has, um, has over 1,519 different connections um, that are actually using this connector. So it gives you a sense of the frequency of a connector that's being used. Um, so basically, is it being run a lot or is it being used by a lot of different flows? And I think that's part of the, the core differences here. In addition, we can see the number of flows involved. So in this case, we have you know, 1,579 different connections for Office 365. It exists in 32 different flows, and these flows have been run 1,519 times. Now, once again, this, is, this provides benefits from a change management perspective is you can now understand what are the types of connectors being used in flows? What are some of the scenarios that people are trying to automate? And then on top of that, it might be also of interest from a, a cybersecurity perspective. If you have users that are connecting to systems that you would prefer they don't, 
then this gives you an indication that you should probably go ahead and start to create some data loss prevention policies um, in order to manage some of the data leakage risks. Uh, in addition to these out-of-the-box connectors, you'll also see some that have a bit of a different name, and uh, these would be custom connectors. So this would be another benefit, is you have custom connectors in your environment, you'll see them show up here. Uh, just for the interest, for the sake of being complete, I'll, I'll just click on the Power Apps. I'm not as familiar with these as I wasn't involved in identifying requirements or being the PM for these, but I think there's, there's some interesting, you know, reports here as well. So the usage and essentially the, the, um, the platforms that are being used on it. So certainly you could go ahead and see like, you know, is it the iPhone or is it being used in web players? Uh, you'd have the ability to, to see and get insight into this. You'd also have the ability to see, you know, from what country or region are these, uh, these power-ups being used. So we see there's United States here and then it was Florida. And I think really what that means is uh, this was, would have been at the Ignite conference, uh, say in Kissimmee, uh, where it would have been used. Location is another interesting one. This is where we're going to see a, a graphical or a map-based view of this usage. So much like you would expect from a Power BI experience, uh, you have the ability to, to zoom in and zoom out and see what countries are actually using this. Uh, let's go ahead and click on the United States. And then we can see the different apps that are being used and the number of times it's been launched. Once again, a great feature for from a change management perspective, trying to understand what are the regions in your organization that are using this. If there's a region that's you know not using it as much, it gives you an opportunity to to understand why, and perhaps uh, it just requires you know some changes to the app. They they may not be seeing as much value as some other areas. Uh, toast error is obviously important. Um, if there's an error in delivering toast notifications to your app. That's something you want to understand and uh, be able to address. Uh, so here we're going to provide you some insight into that. And then lastly, we're going to talk about service performance. And I think uh, this becomes pretty important, especially around custom connectors. So when you have a, naturally when you have a mobile app, you've got a person sitting on the other end of that who's interacting it by clicking on buttons, waiting for responses, doing different visualizations, etc. If you have people that are waiting for extended periods of time, chances are your adoption is going to be low. So this might also give you some insight in terms of why some people may, uh, some regions may not be using it as much as others, especially if your services aren't geo-distributed. Um, and then, well, hey, this thing's too slow, I'm not gonna go ahead and use it. So this gives you the opportunity to do some tuning, identify these, these blockages, and then actually go ahead and proactively fix them and provide your users with a better ex user experience. So that concludes this episode of Middle or Friday. I hope that provided you some with some insight. If you haven't checked out admin analytics, I do suggest that you take a look. If there's things that are missing, I'd love to hear about it because we are still very much investing in this area. We've chosen an iterative approach. We launched with four reports initially. We've added two more. We've got a few others in the backlog as well. Uh, so now's a great time to provide us with that feedback. Till next time, thanks for tuning in to Middle War Friday. Thank you, BizTalk360, for being a great partner of the show. And we'll check you out next time on Middleware Friday.